Three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the November 30th, November 30th, 2023 meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Mr. Baysmore or Ms. Gover if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Gover, please call the role of board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Lifter? Present. Ms. Drummond? Present. Thank you. Ms. Drummond? Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Present. We have a quorum, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Gover, please call the role of staff members and guests participating in today's meeting. Ms. Charlie Green? Present. And Mr. Basemore? Uh, present. Thank you. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is protocols and meeting topics for the 2023-2024 Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee. And for that, I call on Mr. Tony Baysmore. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's a privilege and honor to be here with you and our, our, our team this year. Looking forward to the legislative session. And I um, wanted to, to just start off by saying that the actual session starts January the 10th and it goes for 90 days and it ends on April the 8th, uh, sign and die. So in that three to four month period, there's a lot of bills that come about, um, um, usually in the hundreds, hundreds of education bills um, that we'll track and follow and have discussions on some of those some of those bills. Um, I wanted to start off by uh, giving the purpose of the committee and uh, I'll read that. The Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee is responsible for reviewing legislation that affects the board and the school system. And the committee develops legislative priorities that are reviewed and approved by the board. The committee meets monthly during general assembly session or meets as necessary and receives updates from the director of the Office of Government, Governmental Relations and Constituency Services. Uh, we also have a link that's up on our, uh, our board docs um, to, to MABE, which is the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. And as you can see on the first slide, we also have a schedule of our committee meetings. And um, wanted to pause here and turn it over to Madam Chair to see if, uh, Wanted to have any discussion on the on the agenda and the uh, uh, you know the legislative and governmental committee assignment. Yes, so we um, so thank you for that, Mr. Baysmore. Mm -hmm. So we know that we are in the process of updating our board document, board goals, and so I wanted us to pause here to look at um, you know the purpose of this committee to see if it is in alignment with what we want to continue doing. Do we need to make any modifications to this before we get um, deep into the legislative session? Because right now when I read this uh, purpose, you know, it says, you know, we will, um, we develop legislative priorities, it's reviewed by the board, and then we meet. And, and it kind of stops there. And I'm wondering, do we want to keep that as is? Or are we looking into, are we going to provide testimonies? Are we going to write? Um, you know, do we is it do we want to do something a little bit more action oriented or do we want to keep it as we're going to develop these priorities and we'll send them and we'll meet. So I wanted to pause for some discussion there. And so um, I would love to hear what your thoughts are, um, Ms. Lichter and Ms. Pumphrey. Um, 
Um, I, I, I oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Ms. Pomfrey. I should have raised my hand. I definitely think that we should um, think about presenting testimony and sending and sending letters. I know uh, specifically a couple legislators have mentioned to me that um, they had wished we were a little bit more outspoken as far as testimony for bills that um, we would like supported. Um, and that they oftentimes support colleagues in other states, I mean, excuse me, in other counties um, based upon, you know, their commitment to their boards of education. And they can't really speak up for us if we're not presenting testimony that shows um, how engaged we are. So um, I think that is important. And Ms. Lichter, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, I agree with Christina. I'm thinking we might want to keep it open-ended and write something like and determine next steps for advocacy um, so that sometimes it might be letters, sometimes it might be testifying, sometimes we might decide it doesn't need the advocacy. So um, I agree to put some kind of action step, but I would think maybe leaving it a little open-ended. Yes, I, I like that. Um, Mr. Bazemore, because I know you're, this is really your wheelhouse. Do you have any um, advice for us on any language to use or um, if we want to, so right now as we're, we're re, we review this, it's, you know, it kind of stops at this development of legislative priorities. Um, and so I, I like uh, Ms. Lichter's addition of kind of leaving it open-ended, but demonstrating that, you know, as necessary, we will take some action. Um, I, I agree, Madam Chair, 100%. Um, and if you leave it open-ended, that doesn't put us in a in, in kind of a box because during the session, there, there are uh, multiple ways uh, we, we can weigh in uh, by multiple people. Um, individual board members can testify as individuals when the session opens, um, as long as they state that I am speaking for myself and not for the board. Indi individual board members could write letters. Um, we as a committee, also, uh, can, you know, once we agree agree on um, um, taking a stance, we can take our stance, what we agree to in committee, which could be to support a bill, to oppose a bill, to support with amendments. Uh, we can do that by letter. We can do that by saying we would like in this particular instance to actually send someone um, um, down to testify. Uh, there are times when Mae will put out. We work very closely with Mae, by the way. They are excellent in representing us, and we try to work in conjunction with all our, with, with the other 23 jurisdictions to have one voice on most legislation. But like you said, Madam uh, uh, Chair, sometimes there are individual issues that pertain to Baltimore County that you know we want to speak for ourselves. So I think leaving that open, um, but but also saying that we you know there will be action taken when needed. Um, it doesn't it doesn't restrain us uh, because there's multiple ways of of speaking and and then and, and the chair um, um, can usually designate uh, you madam chair can come down and testify um, or you can designate someone um, there are some bills that uh, the whole the, the entire board of education may want to weigh in on um, so we also can do that and we have madam chair here Jane Lichter where that's a that that goes on the agenda and and there's a vote taken uh, at, a, at one of our annual board meetings. So um, sometimes uh, uh, we have to have, you know, maybe, you know, a specially called meeting to speak about a particular legislation. So, and, and how we want to respond to it. So I think leaving it open, um, but but saying that we, you know, we want to respond and be more active as um, uh, Ms. Pumphrey said, and, and, and Ms. Victor, I, I agree with that. Okay, so, um... So we would need a, a motion to amend this and bring it before. Well, I know that we are in that process of modifying the whole um, our board goals and board handbook, and this is in our board handbook. And so, um, and so, I would need a motion to modify this and let's send it to the handbook committee. Um, so that it can be modified in that in our handbook and when the handbook comes before the full board for approval um, then that's when we can have that discussion around um, the language modification um, what what are your thoughts about that uh, uh, Ms. Pumphrey and then I'll come to you Ms. Lichter so are you are you um, do you mean a specific a motion um, just that we want to amend it or with specific amendments so with specific amendments, so I, I do think we should talk through like what that amendment would 
read um, right after, and I'm and thinking right after this first sentence to have kind of that action sentence in there. And then, you know, the committee meets monthly during General Assembly. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I think that's, um, I think that would be appropriate. And then, Lecter, what are your thoughts? I, I agree. I mean, even just, you know, and to determine next steps for advocacy. So we would determine, you know, if we're going to advocate for it and then what that would look like or whether it goes to the full board, but it at least indicates that there are next steps and doesn't just stop at the meeting. So, so okay. So this to de so to determine next steps for advocacy, that will go. Is that um, the right word? Is advocacy the right word? Well, to determine next steps for to determine, I would say to determine and implement next steps for action. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I like that. So I'll, this is Ms. Lichter, I'll make a motion to motion for the purpose statement to be amended to include the words just stated. That's a messy motion, but you know what I mean. So I have to determine and implement next steps for action. Um, so we at so okay, the language would be the legislative and governmental relations committee is responsible for reviewing legislation that affects the board and the school system, and the committee develops legislative priorities that are reviewed and approved by the board. This is a long sentence. Um, in the school system and the committee develops legislative priorities that are reviewed and approved by the board. Um, the committee meets monthly during the General Assembly session to determine and implement next steps for action or meets as necessary and receives updates. Do we want to put it there? Or no, maybe after or meets as necessary to determine and implement next steps for action. Yes. Please work. Yeah. Okay, so the amendment would go, um, I'm trying to, as necessary. All right, I'm gonna put this in the chat and um, Ms. Gover, tell me if, um, oh, no, it didn't come out right. Let me strike that, let me do it again. I just tried something because I was typing while you were talking. I don't know if that helps. I just put it in the chat. I was typing it while you were talking. I don't know if that looks appropriate. Move, yes, move to amend the purpose statement to insert the word to determine and implement next steps for action after meets as necessary. Yes, that that is the amendment. Okay, so Ms. Gover, could I have a roll call vote? Yes, ma'am, do we have a second? We need a second for the motion. Well, I second. Thank you. And roll call vote. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so this will go to the to the uh yes. Board policy. Yeah, um, board, this board hand, board handbook. So that's Mr. Young is the chair. Yeah, so Ms. Gover, you would get this over to Mr. Young. Is that how this works? Yes, I can do that. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so that was easy. And so the next piece we wanted to go over uh, were the 2024 legislative positions and priorities for MABE. And we will display that on the screen. And 
And this is linked. The full document is linked in the uh, PowerPoint. And so what we're going to do is just go over the, the highlights, the top four bullet points, and then you could read the details in the, um, the 18 page document. But ultimately, there are four top priorities for the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. Um, so that first bullet point and, and Mr. Bazemore, I don't want to steal your thunder. Did you want to go over this? Did you want to review? You can, go, you can go ahead, Madam Chair. And, I, and if you need me, I'll jump in when you need me. OK, so um, I Thank you. read the bold uh, quickly uh, for for everyone. So the, the first bullet point to support support for governance authority for local boards of education to adopt education policy and school system budgets reflecting local priorities and resources support for full state funding for Maryland's outstanding public schools, support for increased state funding for school construction and renovation projects, and support for sustained and increased local government investments in education. So these are the four uh, overarching priorities of the Maryland Association of Board of Education. And so I wanted just to have some discussion to see, is this committee, are we on board with these four? Um, are we standing behind Mabe with this or um, or are we saying no, we, we're not in agreement? And so I'll start with Ms. Lichter. What, what are your thoughts? Are we supporting this or or not? Uh, I think we um, should support Mabe's um, focus unless we've got something egregious that we don't agree with. But based on what you just shared, I think I'm OK with it at least. Ms. Pumphrey. Thank you. I, excuse me, I agree. Perfect. So, um, and so this is good. And these are overarching enough where Baltimore County, we, we definitely fit into this. Um, so, so that's, that's a good thing. We'll keep, we'll have um, updates on kind of where we are throughout the legislative season, especially around these four topics. And so that's made overarching. So statewide. At this time, I want to turn our focus to Baltimore County's legislative priorities. Baltimore County, our, the boards, um, our board's priorities. And so are there any priorities that we want to focus on that are unique for Baltimore County? So we know maybe statewide um, for Baltimore County, are there is there any topics that or any pieces of legislation that we want to focus on? Um, so, for instance, I'm thinking of. Um, so I have two <laughs> that I'm thinking about. The first one is around um, development and the housing. You know, I, I love the fact that Baltimore County, we were getting more and more of these mixed income communities. Um, I love the fact that, you know, it really helps increase the diversity of our neighborhoods. The unintended effect of that is the overcrowding of our schools. And so um, so I, I think one of our priorities should be around, you know, as developers are putting townhomes and more apartments in communities um, to really have something that, that there has to be more done to support the school system. Um, so so that's why and I haven't wordsmithed anything to make it sound fancy, but that's the general gist. Um, and, and I wanted to open that up for discussion on on what are your thoughts around um, having a priorities around just what's happening with development in Baltimore County. So um, it's Ms. Lichter, I agree with you. My only um, question is, isn't that more county executive based? Because I brought that up at when we met with the county executive. Um, and I thought that is something that would as far as pushing on the developers would come more from the county executive than from what's taking place at the state level. But I, I can be all wrong. So that's, but I mean, I agree with you. I just, we have it pointed in the right direction is my question. Right, so yes, it is a local level thing, but I also want us to be on the lookout for any larger bills statewide that may have something to do with school construction, what well, to have something to do with um, development of communities. Um, so you're right, the focus is local, but I also know that statewide there are development bills that come through, not through the education committee, but we should be monitoring what's coming through statewide because that it's going to impact us. So if there's anything that comes up around the development, um, 
where it's going to impact enrollment in our schools, we should have testimony ready. We should be ready to go and 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 um, and say something about that. OK, um, from that, right, I, I right, so I agree. Go ahead, Ms. Pumphrey. Go ahead, I agree as well, and I apologize. I can't find, I don't know if it's because I'm not feeling well, but I can't find my raise hand feature on here for some reason. So I apologize, I apologize if I'm just, um, you know, speaking out uh, out of turn. Um, so I agree, but I, I also sort of had a question in general. As, as for this committee, for the purposes of this committee, are we only supposed to be focusing on state legislator legislation or can we, are we also able to advocate at the county level? And I think we've sort of spoken about this broadly in the past off, you know, um, out of committee individually. Uh, Miss Goldberg, could you put our purpose back up? Because the way that um, that that slide that has the purpose. And so here, so uh, Ms. Pumphrey, I, this is my personal interpretation of it. I get that it's monthly during the general assembly session, but I do think we need to be more active at the local level as well, because that is what directly impacts us. Um, and so perhaps we could amend, and if, you know, amend, you know, not only during the general assembly session, but maybe at county council meetings or, um, because I do agree, we do need to be more involved locally. Um, what are your thoughts, Ms. Pumphrey? I agree. I'm, I just, um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to determine what's appropriate here. So is this something that we should be handling or can handle, can amend to make that part of our purpose? Or um, is that more of an advocacy thing uh, for the board as a whole and not necessarily for LGR? So when I look at this last piece, so it because this is legislative and governmental relation committee, and it doesn't specify only at the state level. I mean, we are advocating for our school system. Um, so, so this is where I'm going to turn to Mr. Baysmore. Uh, has there been any type of precedent or um, any other school system? Do you know of any other school systems? in Maryland whose local board is um, a little more active at, at the local level? Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, the uh, our legislative committee uh, in the past have typically focused on the Maryland state legislature um, 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 in the past. Um, I do remember um, that Councilman David Marks put together a task force uh, in the county council, because because the county council is is purview is land use, land development. They write, you know, they write the laws, they govern that. Um, but he, he put together a task force that had a board member on it to look at um, certain things. So I think I don't think that um, it's outside of the purview if 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 our county council or you know our state legislators are uh, are doing things. Um, you know, writing legislation that if it, it if it directly impacts us, I think there's a way um, to 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 let our voices be heard and advocate without going over the line of, you know, we always want to respect the jurisdiction of, of elected officials and why they were elected council and what's under their purview. So, you know, just having, you know, thoughtful discussions and understanding that balance, um, you know, there's nothing to say that you know, if there's an issue at the council that we can't weigh in or, or you know, and build and build those relationships. But the the, the, the real um, 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 work for most um, local jurisdictions is in Annapolis um, on state legislation. Ms. Pumphrey, does that answer your question or does that leave more questions? Um, I think it answers my question um, and sort of just to clarify, I, I do, I full, fully and firmly believe that we should work together with our county council members, um, you know, in collaboration. That's the only way to make this work. But um, 
specifically the, the development issue is so important to our school system that um, I just I just think we need to make sure that we are weighing in on those types of issues. Um, and I don't think we're always going to agree, but it's still important for us to weigh in because um, the overcrowding and boundary issues are just never ending. As you know, we have one boundary study after another after another because of severe overcrowding and it's still not improved. So something needs to be done at the county level. And I think it's um, um, I think part of our goal should be to be sure that we are voicing our opinions um, as far as what needs to be done to help correct these issues at the county level. Hope that was clear. That, that's clear. And so then we have one kind of loosely developed uh, priority around um, around development. And so is there any language? Uh, and so Mr. Bazemore, could you and your team kind of wordsmith something? How did that work in the past? Was that you and your team that kind of helped with the um, drafting the legislative priorities or are we creating a draft? How did that work um, prior? Right, um, we'll we'll um, put something together. It actually in our January meeting on that on that next slide, um, that's not up. We 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 put in there that we're going to review and discuss BCPS legislative priorities and pre-filed bills uh, in Jan right in January. So we and that what that does is uh, the reason we do it in January that gives us space to have these discussions right now where right. Um, you can talk to other board members who may have a prior you know priority. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I'll be talking to you quite a bit and send you like a draft uh, based on what Mabe has said, and it's kind of like overarching. Um, and then you can, based on your conversations with the other board members and and Miss Pumphrey, you know, tweak that, um, and then you know we'll you know we'll vote on it. So it's kind of a working process. You know, we don't need to do have it all right now. Right. Um, but and that is that'll be an agenda item. Um, in January to go over and approve our, our priorities. But in the meantime, we can have those discussions because there may be other board members that have other priorities that they. That'll be perfect. So if in January, if we see that draft, knowing that we want development as one. Um, Miss. Miss Pumphrey, do you have any other priorities that you want um, to put out there? My big one, which was the same as last year, I know we have um, full implementation of CEP in Baltimore County Public Schools right now, but they're all um, they're uh, they're probably I know last year there was a universal meals bill that came up in legislation and also Maryland Meals for Achievement. So I always like to follow those um, bills, um, even if we're fully implementing CEP, sometimes funding can come from different sources. Um, and so I think it's um, important to keep an eye on those and see if we need to implement, if, see if we need to advocate for um, further legislation regarding universal meals for students or um, and or Maryland Meals for Achievement. Okay. Um, any any discussion on that one or any clarification, Ms. Lichter? Do you have any questions about that one? No, I'm good with that one. Okay, uh, Ms. Lichter, do you have any? Priorities. Um, I, I feel silly saying no, I don't have any priorities, but um, what I'm thinking is as we start going through the budget season with, you know, the budget process, things may start to prioritize based on what we might not be able to fund or what we might not be able to fully fund. So if we could also re look at this, like at the January meeting um, after we have more information on Dr. Rogers FY25 budget, um, that would help me. Perfect. Um, I have two more priorities. Okay. So my my other priority, and, and I know I sound like a broken record with this, is, is the calendar. Um, I don't think we need in state statute both a day requirement and an hour requirement for public schools. It should be either or. And that will give school systems a way more flexibility with how they design their year long calendars. This is Ms. Lichter. I agree with that priority. Um, Ms. Booker Dwyer. I, I feel like I agree also. I feel like that puts more more um, of the decision making in the board's hands and instead of the state's hands, which is important. And then my third priority 
When I think about students as a whole and our Baltimore County students and the population that we are serving, um, I see that we need a much larger role for parks and rec for our students, um, for after school programs, for, for things like that. I would really love to advocate for increased funding for parks and rec so that we can get better parks and rec facilities in Baltimore County. We can offer more um, outside of school time activities and we will see the results of that in school, um, especially on some of our sports teams and um, and even our music and arts and you know just to have that well-rounded student in Baltimore County and the burden isn't always on the school system to be the healthcare provider, the educator, the, the recreation provider. Um, so I would love to see a bigger role and more collaboration with Parks and Recs uh, to provide some extracurricular activities and um, to have more facilities and upgraded facilities in Baltimore County. And you can even put an asterisk and just look to Prince George's County Sports and Learning Complex as a model. I'm just putting that out there. Um, but, but we need those kind of things in Baltimore County to truly, um, with the growing population that we have, we need more for our students to do. And that will help, I think, with behavior. It'll help with crime. It'll help with education. Um, so just thinking of the student holistically and opportunities for um, our families. And when we have so many families that are um, coming into Baltimore that are in the, the lower socioeconomic status, the parks and rec programs are um, the, the, you know, typically where they would go. So any thoughts about that, Ms. Pumphrey or Ms. Lichter? I know it's like um, Baltimore County Public Schools adjacent. It's not really a Baltimore County Public School thing, but it impacts our students and it'll make them, I really do feel like it'll make them better students in our school system. Yes, it absolutely impacts our students. And also we do have a partnership with Park and Recs in many other ways. So I think it's, um, I think that only benefits the school system <laughs> by us advocating um, for more Park and Recs programs because of our partnership with Park and Recs. Ms. Lichter, any comments or thoughts? Um, I agree with Ms. Humphrey. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I agree with Ms. Humphrey. I think anything we can do to strengthen the relationship with Parks and Rec would be um, a real win. So, uh, yes, I agree as that is a priority. Perfect. So, any other overarching priorities? Um, the only thing I can think of again, it's Ms. Lichter, would be anything with funding for tutoring or ex with, you know, extra academic help. I don't know if that's even going to be a priority in the legislation, but if anything like that comes up, especially with um, ESSER, you know, sunsetting and pieces like that, I think we should strongly um, advocate for. Does that make sense? It makes sense. <laughs> And I know that there's other big things that are that will come up, like the blueprint for Maryland's future. And. Um, and, you know, we'll see what bills are pre filed and we can have deeper discussions ab about that. And um, and, you know, and as other bills come up that directly affect us. But I, I think having, you know, some key priorities that we know that we really want to advocate for uh, would be great. Matt, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Raysmore. Um, and and also what what I'll what I'll do as we track uh, these bills uh, through the session. If there are any local bills, I will kind of separate those and get those to you right away. And we, we we usually keep a you know keep a record of our local bills that come through. There's usually like two or three. Perfect. And um, Miss Goldberg, could you go back two slides? Back to that purpose slide. So I know we um, we just went through the first paragraph and the first bullet. <laughs> and so, Mr. Baysmore, I'm going to turn it back over to you to um, to go over the committee schedule and the the rest of the slides. Okay. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, this is our schedule uh, through the session. And um, if there are uh, meetings that Madam Chair would like to have, uh, if something comes up during the session, we, you know, you have the authority to call, you know, uh, specialized meetings. Um, and again, we do have the link up to make legislative priorities on our on our website. Um, I'd like to move to the next slide and look at um, our schedule coming up. Uh, for January. Well, first of all, let me just let me we can go back. Yeah, this is good. Um, our full committee this year is is, is Madam Chair Tia Booker Dwyer. Uh, Vice Chair is uh, Jane Lichter. Uh, Kayla Drummond is is on our committee. She's the student board member, and then we have Christina Pumphrey, um, who's a returning uh, a committee member, and then the staff liaisons are myself, Tony Baysmore, Mildred Charlie Green, Ern Seabolt, and Tracy. Um, um, Gover is is also a part of this team, and she's on on today. So the next slide, please. So we've had a really good um, and I, and, I, and I think fruitful conversation uh, about at, at our November meeting. And I want to thank Madam Chair for having a forethought to say we needed to have one meeting before the session, just to level set, and uh, and especially with the new new board members. So this was excellent. Um, and this is kind of just an overview of how we're going to operate this year. And again, you know, we'll be communicating. It's not just through these meetings. Um, you may you'll get a call from me sometimes. I may be on the floor or or something or, or text or email and uh, because it's fast moving down there and things shift. And uh, so uh, in January, we're going to review and discuss our legislative priorities, which we have some now. And then uh, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, you'll probably send out an email to the rest of the board members uh, after, after we come up with our draft, because um, that way when they get the draft, it's you know, they don't they won't be duplicating uh, anything. And so we'll try to get that to you as, as soon as, as it won't be. It won't take too long. We'll get that to you and um, so that they can weigh in if they want to add to the uh, priority list at, at the in January, we should be able to um, um, share what pre file uh, bills have come up as well during um, COVID. A lot of legislators started pre-filing bills a lot more than they used to um, to make sure that they were at the front of the line, so to speak, when the legislature started. So we want to keep our eye on that. In January, we'll go over all the pre-filed education bills. And um, also um, for the committee, Madam Chair uh, represents um, uh, BCPS and the board at MAVE's legislative uh, uh, meetings. She does an excellent job. I've been to a couple of meetings with her already and uh, uh, just hit the ground running. And so we work very closely with MAVE uh, and Pazam, I say. We always try to show a united front in education. Um, they do a great job representing the 24 local jurisdictions and the superintendents with Pazam. Uh, they are excellent. Um, so that'll be our January meeting. And, and of course, if there's anything else we wanted to talk about, we can in January. Um, in February, we're, we're We'll mostly reviewing and discussing the status of the bills um, that are being filed. Um, again, there's hundreds of bills being filed. There's um, committee hearings being um, established. Um, we will make sure that we are aware of any hearings that are coming up that we may uh, want to testify either as a board or if individuals want to testify, they can. Um, there's a time frame where you have to sign up. Um, I do believe they'll still have kind of a hybrid where you can come to Annapolis and testify, or you can sign up and, and testify virtually. I think that's been working fairly well, so I don't anticipate them changing that. Um, uh, we'll review, Madam Chair, uh, we'll review and, and discuss information shared by MAVE, and, pretty, and, and in April, that's February and March, and, and that's pretty much our blueprint, how we'll operate. Those priority bills that, we, that, that we're, we're tracking, and, and want to testify on, they go to the top of the list, but we'll also discuss other legislation um, that's going on in the legislature. Uh, and there's hundreds of bills that are filed. We don't we don't get in depth with every every bill. That's that's not um, feasible or is it necessary? Um, a lot of times, uh, a lot of the bills will get direction from Mabe and Pazam. Let's let, and I'll give you an example. Let's say there's a there's a food bill that's that that's that that's making its way through the legislature and 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 Mabe and Pazam say the chairs of the committees we've already spoke with them we know this bill is moving forward 
um, you know, it'll be OK. We don't have to spend a lot of time on that because we know that bill is OK. However, may may say, listen, I need the local jurisdictions to write a letter because that bill, you know, we're not quite sure about it and we want to make sure we get it past the goal line. So I may need somebody to testify. I may need somebody to write a letter. And so that's where we'll weigh in on, on those as well. Um, and then in April, we'll do our review and reflection uh, on, on the session and. Um, you know, again, give a final report, Madam Chair, on, on the session on our priority bills, especially. And there's usually about mm, 10 to 20 priority bills that we want to make sure go our way. Um, and uh, it's not it's not, you know, sometimes we have to oppose certain bills that are harmful to us. Um, so it's not always supporting it. It's sometimes we have to, uh, you know, say, hey, this this bill is not very well thought out. We can't support it and weigh in on that. So we'll, you know, in April, sign and die. Um, you know, we'll 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 discuss our legislative session and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think we got a great committee too as well. That 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 really means a lot to have an active um, uh, uh, quality committee, legislative committee. So we're looking forward um, um, to the session. Mr. Bazemore, um, right here, if I could go to this no the November box. Um, and so I know we've reviewed the purpose and charge of the committee um, and then the the forming a consensus on communication protocol for the legislative session. So Mr. Bazemore, I know you 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 went over um, the communication protocol where you know you could either write a letter individually or we could do it as a board. Um, so you kind of went through that. Uh, is there anything else we need to know about just the communication process um, during the legislative session? Uh, no, other than uh, Madam Chair, I'll be um, probably emailing you quite a bit and, you know, just running some things past you. I think the, 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 the most important thing is, is, is that we're on top of all of the bills that, you know, there's so many, you, you know, we don't want to want to miss anything that, that that's important. Uh, but email, because uh, I'll be in Annapolis quite a bit, um, is good. Um, you can get information out through email because sometimes we need information quick um and, and and texting um no i think i think that's that's ba basically it and miss lichter or miss pumphrey anything around the communication and um for the legislative session that anything you want to see um done differently or added or are you okay with uh um you know letters as an individual letters as a board you know going through mr baysmore through you know emails uh text for for anything in particular there anything else that you want? Um, should we have a standing? Do we have standing agenda items on the monthly board meetings around things that happen during the legislative session? I'm, I'm not sure. Is that built into the communication protocol? I don't know. Tra is Tracy? Go ahead. For, for Ms. Lichter, go ahead. I think what I recall from last year, it was on an as need basis. So if there was something, um, you know, brewing or coming up, then we would add it to the agenda. So it was more as needs instead of a standing item. And Ms. Booker Dwyer, on the second meeting of the month, our committee updates. So any items that you want to bring forward during that time, that would be the appropriate agenda item for that. Perfect. Ms. Pumphrey, anything you have to add about communications or, or anything? Um, just a little clarification for um, us as a committee. I would assume that if something comes um, is brought to our attention as far as legislation that may be um, that someone may re out, reach out to us and say, hey, I think this might be important for the board to take a look at. Um, I would assume I should uh, we should just email those items to Mr. Baysmore and um, that could get added to our agenda to talk to discuss at the next committee meeting. Yes. Yes. And you can add, uh, me, me, myself and the chair will work so close together. Anything you send me, send to her, vice versa, because she'll be my, you know, my go-to person a lot of times. And like I say, sometimes it's it's fast. I may have, you know, hey, I'm I'm on the floor, and here's what's happening. This, you know, what do you think, and can we get a consensus? So, um, uh, Miss Pomfrey, that'd be great. That'd be perfect, actually. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Any other questions about this slide? OK, Mr. Bazemore, I'll let you continue. OK, and I think we went through the uh, 
the schedule uh, for January, February, March, and April. And uh, let's see, is it is there a next slide? No questions. And okay, wow. Um, I think we covered it, Madam Chair. Unless there's any questions or, or further discussions on, on on other subjects, I think we've done a pretty good job today. I think so as well. Is there um, so I'll officially are there any additional questions for Mr. Baysmore on his presentation? Ms. Slicker, no, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm good as well. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, thank you. Perfect. So the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting is scheduled for Monday, January 22nd, 2024. Well, it'll be in a new year when we meet again, <laughs> 4.30 p.m. Is there any further business? Now, I just, just, I'd just like to thank you, Ms. Booker-Dwyer, for how you have organized this first meeting. And I too, I just want to echo that, Madam Chair. Um, I am truly looking forward to working this year with you and you know your breadth of knowledge on policy and things at the state level will be such a such a benefit um, to our to our committee under your leadership and and again we have a great committee here uh, um, with uh, Madam Chair Jane Lichter and uh, Christina Pumphrey because she's she was on the board last year our committee so she has experience and then I'm um, looking forward to working with um, uh, uh, Kayla Drummond to our, our student board member as well because they have uh, days in Annapolis where students can come and visit and that sort of thing. So uh, anything around that, I want to, you know, at least I want to keep her aware of that and see if any of our student council folks want to come down and, you know, spend a day in Annapolis. So looking forward to it. Yes, and um, and, and thank you, Mr. Baysmore, uh, for for putting the PowerPoint together and um, and all the phone calls and texts. To, to <laughs> And, um, and thank you, Ms. Lichter and Ms. Pumphrey uh, for all your input today and Ms. Gover for, um, for, for helping us with all the logistics. And I do have one more announcement um, so that there were some modifications to the second slide. And so the revised slide deck will be updated in board docs and it'll have the modifications to the second slide. And so, um, so if there's nothing else, um, that is, since there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Madam thank Chair. You, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Do the same.